Hello, this is Hawker Bean, and today we are going to be tumbling. If you like watching me tumble and possibly give myself a little bit of brain damage, because why the heck not, then please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Now let's get right into this, because I don't I want to delay this any longer. You know that I kind of delayed it a little bit. <sighs> How casual or oh, sorry track that fans think James T. Kirk is. How James T. Kirk actually is. How casual or oh, sorry track fans think John Unluke Picard is. How John Luke Picard actually is. James T. Kirk. I don't know who these are, by the way. Graduated in the top 4% of his year. Was bullied by jocks. Is a history nerd. Heard. Was so much of a history te of a teacher's pet that he cheated on an exam and was commended for it. Was referred to as a sack of books with legs. John Luke Picard. Spent all his free time drinking in pubs and playing billiards. Broke more hearts than he can remember. Saw a bar fight that ended up in him being stabbed in the heart. Likes to explore the dangerous ruins of ancient civilizations for fun. Wouldn't even become uh, become a starship captain if he wasn't in this much of a hothead. And yet people still manage to get it backwards. Damn. I think it's a problem of first officer, really. Jim Kirk seems it was like a what odd man because he's standing next to calm, logical Spock. Meanwhile, Picard seems stately and dignified because he's standing next to Will. Well, any alien and physiology is bang well if you just put some thought into it, Riker. Of course, then we get next to the next X layer, which is that Spock is the dude who told the Val the Vulcan and Science Academy to frick itself or right like her plays a trombone. The Federation is a confusing place. It's the layers. Like an ogre. In case you didn't already notice, I don't care for the space war or things. I don't care for Star Wars. I don't care for Star Trek. And heck. Doctor Who is kind of mid. And that I actually watched. People say dolphins are smart, but they're not smart enough to not be a crappy Greg River 2 plot having surrounded in the goddamn ocean. There. Congrats! You are the piss lord of Crap Mountain! Thank you for having turrets down the mountainside so that we, the cruel owls, may feast on your bounteous craps! <laughs> <laughs> That's. I think they might be a little bit angry. <laughs> I'm not laughing because it's a poop joke. I'm laughing because it's just such an overreaction for literally what I account for is basically just a correction of grammar. I was so totally not aware that people didn't know that being sorted into houses was a real thing in UK schools. It's not something made up just for the Harry Potter world. It's a real schooling system. I was in the St. George house at my school and everyone had the same attitude to prefects as everyone in the Harry Potter world did to Percy e Weasley. I can assure you. How do you get the hat to talk? We had them here in my high school here in Australia, and let me tell you, I wish we didn't. Why? That looks awesome!
<laughs> I'm torn between my feelings for the OP statement and my feelings about your school's officially sponsored raunchy furry artwork. I love it. I love uh, 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 of, of that, honestly. School's doing something ain't bad. How do you get the hat to talk? You guys have state assigned personas and just never told anyone? I can't tell which phrase is funnier. The phrase state assigned for personas or the phrase uh, government mandated girlfriend from a different sort of uh, community altogether. They're both hor horrifyingly e e amazingly e terrifying ideas. Or terrible ideas, in at least one of their cases. Why are you being so slow? Don't do that. Wait, what? Think about how the names Arctic and Antarctica just means bears and no bears. What? What could be more human than coming to a place you've never been and saying, Bears are here, then visiting a similar place and going, Hmm, but no bears here. <laughs> and hilariously, that's not why it is called that. There's a circle of the bears because of Ursa Major and Ursa Minor, and a circle without bears because, you know, opposite part of the sky. We looked right into that one. So, what we're saying is the stars dictate whether bears do or do not exist in places. Austral uh, Austral <laughs> Astrology is real, but only for predicting where our bears will be. Bears do not travel to places they cannot see their gods! <laughs> I've seen this post before, but it only just occurred to me that there might be some sort of underlying reason that places where bears are and places where people name stars after bears overlap. Reblogging for that last comment. Can I skip these? The ones that are just like, oh, I'm reblogging. And for such such reason, because it doesn't really add anything. I get the feeling I'm going to relate to this a lot. <sighs> Anyone else has, like, the inability to form habits? Like, throw people, they repeat something daily for a couple weeks and it sticks. They might miss a day, a year or there, but the overall habit is formed. Me? I can push myself to do the same task daily for 8 months, forget one day, and it's gone. I realize three, like, 3 weeks later that I have not done it a single time since. Me with school. ADHD mood. I heard with ADHD it needs to stop being so reliable or I need to go to the doctor. Okay, so like... This is a kind of a, a tricky one for me. Because like... I, I don't... I have these like scheduled things I have to do every day or else I will freak out or... I feel really bad at in my own skin because it's one of them is like just shaving my entire body every day. Anyway, but then there are some things where I just can't form it into a habit. Like one day I'll be like, oh, after my video, I'll just play video games. And then the next day I'll be like, I'm tired. I'm going to just watch anime. And the next day I'll be like, I don't want to watch anime. I just want to listen to this stuff on YouTube. Next day I'm like, I'm gonna traumatize myself with Amori! The next thing I'm like, oh my goodness, I forgot how much grinding is in Amori. I'm watching anime. So 
So yeah, I recently started playing more again, and oh my goodness, there's way too much grinding. Especially in this mod pack, I think it made it even more difficult than it was before. Novel about a morally grave higher captain who is cursed to die within five years for stealing some forbidden treasure and only giving in her heart to someone expecting nothing back can break the curse. But rather than go on some journey to find some true love or whatever, she decides to use her last years to travel the seas with her crew and collect treasure and drink and be merry. And on a day of reckoning, she is falling more and more ill, and then her crew gather all around her to say goodbye to their captain. But suddenly the curse is broken because she gave her whole heart to her ship and her crew and respected and expected nothing back. I like this. I like I I really like stories about true love that isn't the romantic kind. Oh my goodness, that, that's beautiful. My fatal flaw? I can't name genres of music. How can people hear a bunch of funky tunes and think, ah yes, this is indie folk rock with punk influences? Like what? I have the same problem. I can't and comment on any song beyond, oh yeah, I vibe with this. This is a banger. Finally, someone understands. There are two genres of music. One, oh, I can vibe with this. Two, what is this? I more or less know genres of music and know how they're supposed to sound. But like, it doesn't mean I like music for its genre. I like the music because I like the music and I like, I like the lyrics that comes with it because as that's what I really focus on when I'm, I'm singing along to songs is the a lyrics that I really relate to me. Whether it be about a girl figuring out that she's actually a girl and not a boy, like the Biscuit theme song. Or it's something relating to Amori. Baby poses thinking I take pictures of him and not the art. Baby is art! <laughs> Your pet is probably as happy to see you as you are to see it. Here comes a warmth slab, it thinks. Wrong! It thinks, God, I hope this dipshit doesn't spill beans all over me again. Who the fuck eats beans in bed? And I eat everything in bed. Ooh, that looks like a good last thing to read. Because it's long. And gives me an excuse to end the video a little bit earlier. Because I am definitely hearing the awake noises. Nobody ever gets the mugshot of Gluttony right. These days, you think it has nothing to do with body weight. What a good trick that Gluttony could take a shape. No. There was never any fault in finishing a meal or in taking second half. Helpings. It was always in taking from others that there was an issue. The oil by Aaron's fingers seepled over dead bodies in stolen lands. Gluttony. Twin of greed. On a most thing a greed and envy on his siblings. Gluttony is pleased with the experience of gaining. It's thrilled just by having. Greed is the one that stays hungry. That's forever like a sh- That's moved forever like a shark. Gluttony likes it. 
A glutton for punishment is one who is seeking to harm, who loves to rush. Gluttony is a mother using her daughter's body for a diet testing ground. Sharpening the bone angle is gluttony is saying, Why? I will not to 7th and 8th man engine and, and or yacht. It is not just wanting the six white horses. It is making sure that the horses come from your stables. It is not just bathing in milk. It is bathing in milk while others are starving. Oh, it's true that some sin still blaze in their bright, bright floral prints. Rat and, and, and a white woman yelling at the per person of color for even daring to be in her neighborhood. The red and sip and rage of a necktie and at even the thought we would uh, take the guns away. Rat has laurels and she's good at her job and works hard. But Sloth wasn't ever the sleepy e e morning in of depression. The hour spent being again a clouded body to please move. God damn it. The process and work at the claiming even rest is somehow demonic. It was never chronic fatigue. Sloth was subtle, a gray mist. She is watching you get bullied and she's deciding it is not her business. She crosses the picket line because what? It's just chicken, isn't it? She's closing her eyes and tearing her head when the next anti-gay legislation passes. Someone else will handle it. Not the tense freeze of anxiety or a lack of preparation. She knows you're hurting and would rather you stay quiet about it. She tells other people, I just, I just don't see what the big deal is. Sloth is a father that doesn't do the dishes. Sloth is your boyfriend's innocent and shrug. You're just better at, at household shit. Sloth isn't the missed opportunity. It is a purposeful desire to just get someone else to do it. Greed and envy are doing body shots in the back of a private jet. They are the way they always have been, but are lovers in the age of the internet. Greed just finished union busting. Ing is rolling a bit a coin over his knuckles and is about to decide another MLM. Envy is in a broad brimmed hat, showing off her Instagram and live, grinning about how if you want it, work for it. Okay, it's true. You have a soft spot for lust. Gathering dust in a corner is so tame in comparison to with the others. But how fighting lust is always painted as being a woman in tight clothes. You've met actually lust for women's, the ones that have purposefully climb into your partner's lap. The ones that say lesbians are gross but ask the bisexual women into bed with their husbands. A lustful woman is not donned in lace and gorgeous and red. That's how men think lust looks. Painting their own sins into frame. In this way, the sin displaces as, as fog and hovers above her. A woman in a dress is lust, but the man experiences is just a natural consequence. Here is the thing. Lust is doing just fine. Save your pity. Lust is running more circles than any of them. Lust is shutting down safe sex work sites while also making teenagers in knee-high socks sex sensations. Lust is CEO of an advertising network where women never pass 25 years old. All the bras uh, as lust makes are, are pretty to look at, but when Warren legitimately hurt Lust's podcast, his fur coat looped around his shoulders, sells the idea that only certain people have value, that sex raises some and destroys others. Lust is tilting his head and asking, What did you expect when you dress like that? Lust shuns you, sneers at everything you want is disturbing and taboo, right until he can figure out how to capitalize off of it. Lust has a Midas ability. Everything he, he touches becomes an object. People usually say Rat is a scary one. You agree with FMA here though. The real dangerous one and is pride and that crap eating grin, the white cloaks and the nationalism and the inability to apologize. It is every fighter who threw a book at your head because you don't respect him. It is every mother who said, My my son has deserved to have his life ruined over allegations. It is a teacher that felt OZ because you talked back. You worry you have this one. You feel guilty when you need help, but don't ask for it. Prideful. Ashamed when you complete. It's something to feel good about it. 
too proud for your own good. But pride is not the reward of hard work or accomplishment. Pride is a Twitter feed. It is the thing that has to mask. I didn't do anything with look at me. Pride is your father's raised hand, his raised voice, how he was as never there when you needed him, but he is still head of the house. He ruins dinner and blames on you. You're an embarrassment to this family. This is the glass you walk around, the cuts in your feet. Oh, he says, this is how I raised you and you have to bite back the retort. That's because you didn't actually freaking raise me. Damn. <laughs> That was a good ending. If you liked this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. I have no idea what I'm going to be doing tomorrow. Probably less reading of the seven deadly sins in a really modern and accurate way. Maybe? Who knows? Anyway, until then, goodbye!